Dang it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, anyways. Over there. Okay. Anyways, I wanted to show you this. See this map right here? See that section right down in there? I drew that. I drew this little, these little pieces down in here. That That is a trail that leads to this uh, isolated area. So my goal is to tell you about it quickly because, uh, you know, this is YouTube. So at any rate, I, uh, I was over in Madagascar and... Uh, you know, I saw this little island, so I wanted to go over to the island to check it out because, uh, just curiosity. So I got in my boat and I cruised over there, and I came. I, I saw all these signs, you know, keep out, reserve, preserve, keep out, keep out everywhere. I think it was like British government or somebody was hanging onto this area. But those areas intrigue me because usually that's where the best hunting is, you know, preserve, you know. So I went ahead to the shore and I went up on the shore. I went and I kind of hid my boat, and I went up into these uh, like plants, you know, whatever big plants, so I wouldn't really be seen that much. And I saw these guys single file; I could see their feet. They had they are dark skinned people, and they had some kind of weird shoes on. So I climbed up closer to, to get a better look, and they were they were like primitive people going along this single file, and they're all carrying these big baskets. Um, so I just watched them for a while. And a long while. There's quite a few of them, and then there, uh, the last one came by. So I kind of came up a little longer to look over to see where these guys were going, you know, because I'm not supposed to be there. And there was one more guy coming, and he saw me. So I just kind of waved at him, you know, I'm ready to run or whatever I got to do. He stopped. He looked at me. So I came out a little further, and I nodded my head, you know. I said hello, you know. He said hello back. So. I went up to talk to him. I go, hey, what are you guys doing up here? You know, you need some help or what? You know, I tried to pretend. And he said, we're carrying the food back to the village. You know, you want to come along and have something to eat? I thought, well, what if they're cannibals? You know, so I go, what kind of food you got in there? You know, he shows me they had these like big opali fish, you know, mostly. And there were some other fish in there, too. And like um, abalone, you know, and some clams and things. Just stuff they gather from the beach, I guess. I don't know. So, you know, I told him, yeah, sure, it looks like they're, you know, they're going to be okay. So I, I follow this guy, you know. I follow this guy up this trail, and it went through, like, this big canopy of trees and things like that, and eventually dropped into this area where there was a lot of people down in there. And to me, it was like open sky, but all I could really see is the canopy of the trees, and kind of like I was in a cave, but yet I could sense sunshine, you know. So anyways... Uh, I went down in there and, you know, I had some food and these guys are looking at me, but they're all friendly. And uh, I started asking this kid some questions, the guy that I met initially, because most of these people weren't speaking in English. They were speaking in some language I don't know, you know. And he told me there's something I really needed. He says I needed to speak to the medicine man, you know, mostly. So I asked him where the medicine man, he told me, you know, I went up this little pathway, one of this guy. This guy is old. I mean, he's been around a long time. He's probably the oldest one in this village or whatever it is. So I asked him what you guys are doing here. You know, and he kept staring up in the hill. He wasn't really looking at me. I was like, what are you guys doing up here? Is, it, is this like, you know, where you live all your life? I mean, generations and so forth. It's, I, I don't know anything. I'm not a professional in any of that. I just like to hunt. You know, and he says, I, I want to build a monument, you know. That's why we're here, to build a monument. And I thought, oh, that's pretty good. I started to show him my map, you know, but I figured I'd just wait and see. And um, so anyways, I, I asked him about the monument. I says, a monument to what, you know? He said, it's a monument to me. He looks right at me and says, it's a monument to me. So I, I looked up on the hill. I go, I don't see nothing up there. He goes, and then, then he kind of, his countenance changed. He goes, I know that, uh, you know, I can't get him to do it. I can't get him to build a monument, you know? While I was talking, I noticed a uh, majority of the guys that brought all that food up were were in single file again, and they were like going back down another trail, you know, going back down somewhere else. They were carrying all the food away, and uh, I started to ask him about that, but I figured he just didn't. He seemed kind of irritated, so I went back down where that kid was, and 
had a great you know that was some good stuff you know and these guys danced and there was women there and children and everything else and they were very very cordial to me uh, overall it was a pretty good experience so I slept anyways I slept there that night I got up the next morning you know and um, I noticed that all these men had kind of like gone again you know so or they hadn't come back whatever I don't know but uh, I wanted to find out where that went so I went down that trail that these guys had been on I went down that trail through that uh, opening down there some other place and I saw a whole bunch of guys down there you know so I went on down there you know assuming they, these were not the same guys these were different guys okay and they were like playing games and doing all kinds of stuff um, not working not making anything not doing anything they were just there like celebrating and uh, I tried to talk to them but they didn't they didn't speak my language apparently they weren't mean or anything but um, I really got nothing out of it so I went back up the trail back up to the village area all the men were still gone there's some women and children there and I went back up where the medicine mountain was and I said those guys that went to get the food where are these he says, well they're all gathered again they're getting more stuff and I thought they got a lot of stuff last night you know it's, it seems like there was way more than enough and they went down this pathway because yeah they went to the other village and I said I went to the other village too. I said, there's a bunch of guys there, but they weren't the same guys. He says, no, they're not the same guys. You know, those guys that went to get the food are self-governing people. And these guys here, and all of a sudden he was real silent, you know. So I just waited. I didn't say anything. You know, I'm not going to, like, push myself on or anything. And um, and then he told me, he says, the self-governing people, he says, we've got to eliminate them. You know that. I'm like, yeah, you're right, yeah got to eliminate them other guys. I'm like, what is this guy talking about, you know? And so he says, that seems to be the whole problem here. He says, the problem is that they, 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 they're self-governing. They don't want to listen to me. He says, you know, you know, when I got here a long time ago, I was 20. I wanted a monument then, but it wouldn't happen. So there were some people in the village that were sick, okay? They were really sick. And so he's the medicine man, and they, they took these people and they put them down in this other location because it was contagious and um, they fed them there and that little party of people that were sick you know these these guys would feed them and he got this idea so what the, the thing is is he started allowing more and more guys who got tired or whatever he'd them down that village you know they, they couldn't go that day they stepped on a stick they cut their foot they broke their toe whatever the case is he'd send them down there to that village and so that little village down there started to grow and grow and grow until pretty soon like half the guys were down there and the other half were up here, you know, still gathering food for the village. And he says, over time, you know, like over 40 years or so, he says, they're almost ready. He said, the whole plan, okay, basically to, to net it out because I'm running out of time here, the whole plan is that all those guys that are down in there, he said, there's more of them than there are the guys that are actually doing the gathering. So what these guys do, man, they go down and they gather food all day long and they bring it back to feed the village. But the village is only getting like 25% of the food and the productivity of what they did all day then instead of staying there to enjoy a meal with their wife and children these guys go down the hill to feed this other village which is like way bigger than their own and that's why those guys aren't doing nothing all day because they don't need to they just wait these guys show up man with the food so they eat it and then they go to sleep whatever they do and these guys here come back in the wee hours of night or whatever and finally crash out eating, eating something and then come out and do it again the next day but the reason why that all happens, and what this medicine man's plan is, is to allow this number to dwindle and dwindle and dwindle until they cannot support all those people down there. All those guys, and I guess there's some women and stuff, but they, they, they pretty much just isolate themselves from here. They don't want anything to do with food gathering. So um, they get hungry because these guys up here can no longer pull the weight for everybody. And the medicine man goes down there and, and, and tells them, look, we need to take that village back because those guys are being stingy. So these guys from the village down there, they come up, okay, and there's basically war. And they kill off all those guys that are doing the gathering of the food. There's only like 20 of them left, and there's 120 of them coming up the hill. And they kill them all. So now the medicine man has a whole big bunch of people here who just killed the guys that are doing the gathering of the food. But little to their little do they know that the medicine man has a big old storage of stuff. So the next day when they're hungry, they don't know how to gather food. The medicine man tells them, get a couple guys, and they bring the food down, and he just keeps feeding them. Okay, so now these guys are totally dependent upon that medicine man. The bottom line is, 
He tells them he wants a monument. They don't know nothing, man. They don't know their history. They don't know where they came from. They don't even know where they're going, and they don't care. So they start selecting people that had pissed them off, and those people go up and start building a monument. These guys can still party every day, and, and basically those guys who were ostracized from this group of people because of something they did or was manufactured, they build this guy's monument. That's his whole strategy. And after I listened to him, I decided, you know what? I'm out of here. I don't want nothing to do with this. I don't want to be one of them guys, so I, I got back in my boat, and I booked it back to Madagascar. I mean, that's the whole story, and it's a true story. Um, it's about as true as this. See this? That's not backwards, because I could see it. I could read it plain as day. And if I show it to you, what does it say? As long as I don't show you what it says, you won't know what it says, unless you look at it from a different perspective. And anyways, that's my perspective. And if you believe that, I can probably sell you a bridge that goes from Madagascar to this little island. I wrote this as a book, right? But I didn't have time. So I figured I'd just tell you.